Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Gotham Knights and also some other topics that are Arrowverse related towards the end of the video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so Gotham Knights is a new show that is coming to the CW, it's going to be set in the Arrowverse but it's not going to be directly a spin-off of a Batwoman, even though it's centered around the Bat family and Gotham, and obviously that's in the name, so you could be forgiven if you thought it was linked. But basically what Gotham Knights is going to be, as it was previously announced, is it's going to start with the death of Batman, aka Bruce Wayne, and Bruce's adopted son, who is Robin, or Nightwing, it depends how old they make the character, is framed for the murder of his adoptive father, and so in the aftermath of that, he has to team up with some of Batman's greatest enemies, children, in order to clear his name, but they eventually join and become a group known as the Gotham Knights, and they protect Gotham City. And they are kind of like a young justice team, or similar to the Teen Titans, but with a villainous twist, because most of the Gotham Knights' parents are villains, apart from obviously Bruce's adoptive son. So that is the gist of the show that they are going for, and it's very exciting because just yesterday, Danny John Cannon, the new executive producer of Gotham Knights, and he's going to be directing the pilot and probably some future episodes, just announced via his Instagram account that principal photography is set to begin in April 2022. So currently right now, it's February the 15th, so we're midway through February, and we are approaching March, and then the month after, obviously, is April. So we are going to be seeing more and more news in regards to Gotham Knights as they approach their April shoot date. That is when they're going to be filming the pilot, and apparently it's going to be up in Toronto. I don't think that's actually been confirmed by any official sources, but it's what was reported on the other day by one news outlet, so I presume that is true, and that would be in the same locations where Titans films, and so it's a bit strange that they would not go for Vancouver, considering that this is a CW production, it is going to be on the CW, it's produced by Warner Brothers and CBS as far as I'm aware, I don't think it's HBO Max related, and obviously Titans is HBO Max related, and so they can afford Toronto and it's just kind of strange because the CW has most of its productions set up in Vancouver, but nevertheless, maybe they like that landscape better for Gotham than Vancouver because obviously we see in Vancouver a lot in these Arava shows and maybe they want to be a bit distinctive, even from Batwoman, which films in Vancouver and uses Vancouver. I believe in the crossover episode, they used an American city as Gotham for some of the exterior scenes. But that's very rare because they don't have the production budget to get a whole crew over there, you know, get the stars over there and film it just for the sake of like being realistic and making it trying to be a bit like Gotham. I think they filmed it in Chicago actually. But nevertheless, this is very exciting that Gotham Knights is beginning and so they released this photo. So Danny John Cannon, who is the executive producer, well one of the executive producers, along with the likes of Greg Berlanti, and who's also going to be directing the pilot episode, release this photo, and you get to see the Gotham Knights logo. It's a pretty simple logo, and obviously the backdrop of it, I can't make out what specific city it is because I haven't been to Canada before. It could totally just be a random photo that he found, but I'm presuming it will confirm what location they're filming in. Do let me know in the comments down below if you recognize the city and the buildings that you're seeing here. I don't think it actually looks like Vancouver, so that kind of backs up that point. But nevertheless, the Gotham Knights logo is here, and although there isn't like much to break down in terms of the logo because it's just pretty simple and doesn't have any bat-related things going on, it's cool that we get like an official logo this early on, and obviously it can change later once production has started and once they're trying to put out advertisement in terms of you know promoting the show if it goes forward with the series and once again i have to reiterate that gotham knights could maybe not go ahead at all like they can film the pilot and if the cw doesn't like it they can just scrap the show entirely they've done that many times with different shows including arava shows and 
at least they have the pilot ordered, that is the good thing for now, so we know that they're going to be filming in April, and they like what they've seen right now from the Batwoman writers and from Danny John Cannon, who has previously worked on Gotham, he's quite known for that, he directed a lot of episodes, I think he produced the show as well, and so obviously they have trust in these guys and to create this new kind of Gotham show that's going to be set in the Arrowverse but also be probably a bit disconnected. I don't see this being like 100% on Earth Prime. I think this is another version of Gotham and that's why you have like the death of Batman and it's not going to relate to Batwoman and they specifically made it very clear in the press release that it's not a spin-off of Batwoman, it's its completely own thing and it's just a new idea that they came up with although it's somewhat similar to the premise of Batwoman when it started which is that it begins with the disappearance of Batman and in this case the death of Batman and that kicks the story forward and that's where you meet the characters so it's similar but I think it's an exciting idea that we get this kind of team of rogues although they are not necessarily straight up villains it's just that their parents were and then you put Bruce's adoptive son in the mix and I think it is very very interesting so let me know down in the comments below what do you think about this are you excited for Gotham Knights but without further ado let's move on to the next part of this video so we have some questions from you guys and you guys know I like to do Q&A videos because I think it's interesting to get your thoughts on specific issues or ideas that you've been thinking about for a while and you want answered or you want theorized about and so I really like theorizing and talking about the shows that are currently on right now, what could happen in the future and everything like that. So I asked you guys on the community tab to send in any questions you had in regards to The Flash, Justice U and Gotham Knights and we got some good questions from you guys and so if you want to participate in any future Q&A videos please be sure to go over to the community tab right now because after I post a Q&A video, I always post a new call for questions in order that we can make future videos with your questions and so make sure that they are new and they're exciting and they're interesting questions that are well worded and very understandable and bring up interesting ideas for the future of the Arrowverse. But the first question comes in from John Mark Peterson who writes, do you think that Oliver Queen as the Spectre could show up in Justice U since it's basically an Arrow spin-off with Diggle? So this is a very good question. So lots of people have been wondering, is Oliver going to return at any point? Is Stephen Amell going to come back? And with the announcement of Justice U, a new TV show which is going to be helmed, at least the pilot is, by David Ramsey. And Justice U is going to be following Diggle as he teaches a set of new heroes or new matters who are going to be going undercover at a university somewhere in America. And so this show is teased to be somewhat similar to Young Justice or Teen Titans. So again, kind of similar to the Gotham Knights concept but it's probably got more solid ground considering that David Ramsey is so heavily involved considering he's going to direct the episodes, he's going to be one of the main stars. And so basically the idea of Stephen Amell coming back as Oliver Queen or the Spectre is definitely a good idea. Like I think Stephen is very open to it at this point. He keeps on posting about, you know, his memories. I mean, just for Valentine's Day, he posted a funny tweet about him and Grant. And so he obviously misses that world and misses the people that he worked with and I think he would accept an invitation maybe from David Ramsey being like, yo can you come on the show, we would like to do a kind of call back to Arrow and maybe Stephen would show up. I don't know if they would try and work in Oliver, like proper Oliver, or would they work in the Spectre because that's the last time we kind of really saw Oliver. So that's definitely up in the air. But I think as essentially an Arrow spin-off like you mentioned, John, it's more than likely that at one point they're going to try and reach out to some of the old Arrow cast members. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get other cast members from the past to be kind of the teachers along with David Ramsey's Diggle. Like, I could imagine Laura Lance showing up at some point. It's definitely possible. So thank you for your question. Let's move on to the next question. This comes from Ambrose Rao on YouTube who asks, the multiverse still exists. Do you think Kara found her way back in space to Earth-38 by using the natural frequency of Earth-38? 
There's no place like home, and maybe she has new villains, could explain the Superman Lois shenanigans. So I like the fact that you bring this up because people have been questioning what has been going on on Superman Lois. Why have they been referencing nothing to do with Supergirl and why all the retcons? Well, I don't think we're going to get any explanations about that. And I like the way that you're thinking, thinking maybe Kara went back to Earth 38. However, yes, there is the new Earths out there because of Crisis on Infinite Earths which our main group of characters are unaware of right now, but we'll find out pretty soon it seems. But it's a fact that most of the Earths or the new Earths out there are completely different. Just look at Stargirl on Earth 2. That is not the Earth 2 that we saw in The Flash Season 2 when Barry went over and that was Zoom's Earth and Harrison Wells from Earth 2. So with that logic, we can presume that Earth 38, where Supergirl was originally set, doesn't exist anymore and would be completely different. There is probably an Earth 38 out there somewhere, but it would not be the home that Kara is used to. So I really don't think that Kara would have found her way back to Earth 38. If we ever see her, I believe she's still going to be on Earth Prime. And especially because of the way that they ended the series, it seemed to promote that Supergirl and Kara are very happy with the way that their life is. And the Arrowverse changing the course of her destiny would completely change the way that Supergirl's ending is supposed to be perceived. Like, she is the new editor-in-chief at CatCo. She's moving forward with a new life as both Kara and Supergirl. And by going back to Earth 38, which would be a new version of Earth 38, it would completely erase all of that. Like, that would be a thing that she only can do on Earth Prime. So, that's my answer to your question. Good question. Let's move on to Olivia's question from YouTube. And she asks, Do you think that the characters Orphan, Huntress, The Question, The Creeper, and also Lady Shiva will be in the Gotham Knights TV series in the future? So I'm going to answer this question quite broadly. I'm going to say, what characters are going to show up in Gotham Knights? Well, I think it can be anyone Batman related. And so your ideas of Orphan, Huntress, The Question, The Creeper, and Lady Shiva are all definitely up in the air. Like that could totally happen. And I mean, you sent other ones like you included our woman, Metamorpho, Crimson Fox, and Queen Bee, they definitely could show up, but we're just gonna have to wait and see, really. Yes, they're probably gonna take some characters that we've seen in the past on Batwoman and probably on Gotham as well, and any Bat-related projects, but at the same time, I think they're gonna try and do something different because this is a different concept, and so they might be taking from newer villains from the comics. There are lots of new, really good storylines. So I can't say specifically if this specific character is going to show up. I think there's always the chance and we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. This comes from Fringy on YouTube who asks, Do you think that Naomi will get folded into the Arrowverse a few years down the line? So... Yeah, I believe Naomi is going to be folded into Arrowverse at some point. Right now, doesn't seem like it's going to be happening for a while. They're even doing this big Arrowverse comic crossover, where they're going to be including all the current shows that are on the CW, apart from Naomi. And that says something big, right? Because if they wanted to include Naomi at this point, they would have participated in this crossover, one can presume. But I think right now the show is new, and they probably are just settling into their world, and at some point, similar to Superman Lois, they will be ready for a big crossover with the Arrowverse. But I don't think that's going to be next season. I think that could be like a season three thing, similar to Superman Lois, because I don't think Superman Lois is going to do any more crossovers this season, apart from if Diggle shows up in like one episode. Okay, so the last question comes from Maya Dean on YouTube who asks, is Justice You and Gotham Knights part of the Arrowverse? And the simple answer to that question is yes, of course Justice You is in the Arrowverse because John Digger was in it and John has literally been in all the shows recently and he is like the one connecting factor across all of the Arrowverse as of right now, including Superman Lois. That is the only crossover that Superman Lois has done. So yeah, 100% Justice You is in the Arrowverse because it's essentially an Arrow spin-off and it's going to be set on Earth Prime. And in regards to Gotham Knights, it's most likely going to be set in the Arrowverse considering that Greg Berlanti is producing it. And yes, not all of the Arrowverse shows that Greg produces are currently heavily involved in the Arrowverse, but they are all somehow linked. 
and I believe Gotham Knights will be linked, but I think their explanation is, is going to be on another Earth, and that's why it isn't a Batwoman spin-off, and it isn't related to that version of Gotham, because it's a Gotham from another Earth that maybe some of the characters will cross over at some point. But that about does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.